You already know how we do it over here right at this time on Wednesdays. I bring the vibes, you bring your full attention, and together we have an amazing and fun-filled time. Today on East Central, Nigerian rapper Black Bones is in the news, Omaomi is in the news, Oxlade <laughs> is obviously in the news, unless you've been under a rock in the past few hours. Away from the continent, I'll tell you about Encanto. Could we find a new home, and what could Nigerian rapper Oxlade and American rapper Nelly have in common? Hmm. Um, uh, the details are in the show and you don't want to touch that dial. I am Shion Bankale, your host for today on East Central. Let's roll, people! Valentine's is around the corner and while people are getting ready to surprise and be surprised and others are clearing their throats to shout, <clears throat> God, when? There's one Nigerian who is being very vocal in his anti-love stance. Rapper Black Bones is currently trending on Twitter over his new promo for his anti-love crusade tagged Breaking the Yoke of Love. The promo, which features gentleman singer Rick Hassani as the choir minister for the crusade, has left many hailing the rapper as a genius. I think I can agree that he's got promotional ability, sure. No, for real. <laughs> In one of the videos, Black Bones and Rick are seen taking a walk. While Blackbone questions Rika Sani on how he moved from singing Gentleman to Thunder Fire, you. But really, that's a valid question. How did you go from zero to 100 real quick? Well, let's take a look at the video. I met up with some of the ministers that are going to be ministering at the Breaking the Yoke of Love crusade. Just to share their experiences with you. Yeah, but still, you know, tell me, how does someone go from, you know, you deserve a gentleman to... Thunder fire. Um, we need answers to that question. Anyways, the video and the entire concept of what we hear is a concert in general has led to fellow celebrities like Ebuka, Rapper Files, and comedian Mr. Macaroni hailing Black Bones, and I'm joining in the stunning. This will not be the first time Black Bones is pulling off a genius promotional stunt. He once took to the streets of Lagos Island with a megaphone, declaring that he is the best rapper on the continent, all to promote a single, Best Rapper in Africa, in 2019. Let's not forget the time he posted a video of himself walking on the streets while his music, Bling, was playing in the background in a bit to confirm how many kilometers he needed to walk before his song, Bling, beats Bola Boy's Kilometer to become number one on Apple Music. Well, safe to say we are looking forward to what he delivers with the upcoming concert. Yes, yes, yes. Moving away from that, now from someone who seems not in the movie for love to someone who is keen into the love day in a big way. Nollywood filmmaker Imo Umoren is set to debut his latest film, The Pretty Ones at the Loneliest, on February 14. The love story stars Lucy Ame, Paul Utomi, Martha Ehinome, Paul Nadiek, Daramini, Nadi Asal Samuel, and others. Shot in Ibadan, principal photography lasted just 13 days. The Valentine special's release follows the story of M.M., a married woman in, a th in her 30s struggling through a loveless marriage and raising her son, while also caring for a recently widowed father who is coming to terms with the death of his wife. While an official release date is yet to be confirmed, Ima Umaren says two private screenings will be held in Lagos and Ibadan on February 14 as his way of commemorating Valentine's Day. He is the director that brought us Children of the Mud, The Herbert Macaulay Affair, and is considered the first filmmaker to make a silent black and white film in Nollywood. Hoo -hoo, we can't wait for that one. Now, just days after announcing that Unruly would likely be his 10th and final album, the rapper and YBNL record label boss has signed Afrobeat artist Asha K. Now, Asha K and Alamide have worked together in the past collaborating on the hit single of Mwokwe. The, the song was Asha K's sixth single in three years and is currently the number one song on the Apple Music 100 Nigeria chart. In addition to the Afrobeat musician, Alamide also signed another artist, J-Boy, with whom he has collaborated in a couple of songs, with the most recent being Yebo Baye. J-Boy also featured on the Lamide's 999 album on the hip-hop track Mojo in 2020. Now, here's the most amazing part. 
According to Olamide himself, J-Boy met Olamide in Ogun State at an event where he was serving drinks and wowed the YBNL boss with a freestyle. It wasn't long after that that he was featured on Olamide's EP, Talk About Chasing Your Dreams. Now, Olamide has had great success with the artists he has previously signed, including Adek Lego, AG Baby, Issa Baby, and Liu Kersh also. He's also responsible for bringing Fireboy DML into our lives, <laughs> and we are forever grateful to him for that. So we definitely cannot wait to see what Ashake and J-Boy have in store for us. Now, it seems a lot of people were victims of bullying at one point or another in their lives. And it's a good thing that people are beginning to speak up against something that can leave long-standing scars, both physically and mentally. But well, Nigerian recording artist Omao Mimigbele is the latest in a recent trend of people sharing their bullying experiences. In a lengthy Instagram post, she explained how she was bullied throughout her childhood. According to the actress, she was ridiculed by her peers primarily because of her physical appearance. In her post, she mentioned that she suffered low self-esteem issues due to the derogatory names that she was dubbed. In her words, she said, I was one of those kids they used to call hammer-headed Augustina and Ekenbe forehead. In fact, one of my aunts used to call me beauty. She said she was using it to prophesy into my life that I'll be pretty someday. Whoops. Well, there was a time I allowed it to get to me. There was a time that I could not step out without being heavily decked up in makeup. I would do all manner of things to hide my flaws because I felt imperfect. Wow. Now, Mao may further explain that she has since found her confidence and she is happy for who she is. Highlighting that she is appreciative of how her Ekembe forehead was designed, the singer writes, Now, the only thing that has changed is that I am madly in love with my imperfect me. Go, girl! With my Ekembe forehead, with my knock knees, with my celluties and stretch marks like the map of Africa. Oh, I love to see it! If you ask me, body positivity and regaining one's self-esteem should be a goal for 2022. Are you with me on this one? Yes, it's not too late. You are just barely 40 days into the year. So get on with it, people. As the singer said, you are beautiful too. Let that ring in your head every day. Now to some rather shocking news, but really, should we be shocked by this anymore? <laughs> Nigerians woke up to explicit footage of songwriter and singer Iku Foriji Olaiton Abdurrahman, popularly known as Oxlade, floating on the internet. The singer was having sex with a woman and they were recording themselves with a phone. Mm -hmm. The video, which has gone viral on Twitter, was leaked via Snapchat. Although Oxlade and his team are yet to make an official statement, Nigerians have taken to social media to react to the video, with some of them pointing out how users were not as kind and light-hearted when singer and songwriter Tiwa Savi trended for the same reason. And here are some of the reactions. This one says, Tiwa Savage was slut shamed when her sex tape dropped, but Oxlade own, Oxlade's own drops and now it's all cruise. Here's another suite that says, apparently there will never be much opera when men's sex tapes get exposed like there is when women's happen. Tiwa's case nearly shut the internet down with text. Nobody cared about Cross's nudes and everyone laughs about Oxlade's. And here is another tweet. Oh my God, the tweets kept going on and on. This one says, many of you were trying to paint Oxley's sex tape like he committed a crime. Hmm, SMH, everybody is evading on Twitter. <laughs> wow. Well, at the end of the day, I hope we can all try to be mindful of what we post on social media this year. Because you know what they say, the internet never forgets. I thought we left sex tapes in 2021. Hmm. Now, remember I told you that Nigerian rapper Oxlade and American rapper Nelly have something in common? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll give you the details of what that is after this break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back here to watching East Central. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is obvious that we have, in fact, not left sex tapes in 2021. And that is what Oxlade and Nelly have in common. While Oxlade was trending in Nigeria because of his sex tape, American rapper Nelly is trending in the United States because of his. Born Cornell Errol Haynes Jr., but known as Nelly, the three-time Grammy winner is apologizing for a video of himself on the receiving end of sexual services, which somehow got posted on his social media. 
It says the old clip was never meant to see the light of day. The hot in hair rapper started trending on Twitter after his Instagram story briefly included an uncensored video of a woman performing oral sex on him while his face did not appear in the 54 second video. The video was quickly deleted, but not before folks were able to capture screen recordings and also repost. Now, the musician said, I sincerely apologize to the young lady and her family. This is unwanted publicity for her and for them. This was an old video that was private and never meant to go public. Now, there are speculations that the musician may have been hacked, as his team has stated that they are investigating a breach and they are concerned that more of Nelly's private content may also end up online. By private, we are talking financial information, personal documents, and passwords, among other personal information. Wow, 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 woo. These things really never go away on the internet. Please, guys, let's be more careful. Now, that's all on that. Speaking of the internet, since, it is in, since its initial release six years ago, TikTok has become one of the most used social media sites for people of all ages. Now, social media has its pros and cons, yes, with psychologists documenting the, uh, the effect social media pressure has on young people. Now, TikTok is stepping up to the plate to put some controls in place, and I love it. New community guidelines will be implemented over the next few weeks for the one billion users of the platform. The updates follow community feedback, recommendations from TikTok Safety Advisory Council, and advice from experts in areas like digital safety and security, content moderation, health and well-being, and adolescent development. The first of the major updates will be to their Dangerous Acts and Challenges policy, which will aim to prevent the spread of suicide hoaxes, an issue that previously sat within the platform's suicide and self-harm policies. Additionally, the social media platform will be working with experts to launch new videos from various creators that call on their community to follow four steps when assessing content online, which are stop, think, decide, and act. TikTok will also extend its policies around eating disorders, which would be broadening its current process of removing content that promotes eating disorders to also removing content that promotes disordered eating such as over-exercise and short-term fasting. Another update includes clarifying the types of hateful ideologies prohibited on their platform. In their updates, they referenced dead naming, misgendering, or misogyny, as well as content that supports or promotes conversion therapy programs. Lastly, TikTok will expand its policy to protect the security, integrity, availability, and reliability of their platform by prohibiting unauthorized access to TikTok, as well as banning the use of TikTok to perpetrate criminal activity. Hmm. We definitely love to see these social media platforms owning up and being accountable. Yay! All right, moving away from that story quickly to another one in the international scene. The magic that Encanto has brought to the big screen could be heading to the stage. Could the magical, magical family pack up the casita and head to Broadway? While writer and co-producer Lynn Manuel Miranda says, we will not talk about Bruno, but we will discuss the possibility of an Encanto stage show. Time, every member of our family Cecilia, up top. was given their own magical gift. Uh huh, uh huh. I understand you. I'm not super strong like Luisa. The donkey's gone out again. On it! Or effortlessly perfect like Senorita Perfecta Isabella. But, Mama. Now, it's no secret that Disney loves to bring their animated hits to life. They did it with Frozen, The Lion King, The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, as well as Tarzan. And now, as Lynn Manuel has entered on Encanto Broadway show, might just be hitting fans of the movie and Broadway enthusiasts soon. Now, as much as Miranda would love to see a As much as Miranda would love to see a Broadway production of Encanto, he's not ruling out a TV series or a follow-up film. He said that there are so many stories in that house that it would be a wonderful to expand on needs. Remember, We Don't Talk About Bruno, a song from Encanto made a magical move to number one on the Billboard Hit 100 Songs chart, raked in 34.9 million US streams, had 1.5 million radio airplay audience impressions, and sold 12,300 downloads. Woo, I'm really looking forward to Niger animated musicals. <laughs> okay, that seems like I'm asking for too much here. Well, let's see what is going to happen. Let's start with getting more animated films there first. Baby steps, show. Baby steps. 
All right, guys, let's take a quick break now, and when we come back, we'll converse with my guest. New Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the New Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central, Africa first. Welcome back to E Central. Now, my guest today is a Nigerian actor whose recent role in the short film Focus had me in stitches. He also featured in many state plays such as Morimi, Esel Akintola, Man Enough, and Death and the King's Horseman. Welcome to E Central, Moshud Fatai. You saved yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it was necessary. Yeah, <laughs> Welcome to the show. How do you Thanks feel this evening? Me. Um, thank you, Shil. Mm -hmm. Shout out to uh, Tolu and um, Trust. They okay. had me over. Aww. I was here about two years ago. Oh, it was fun, and I'm oh. happy to be back. Yay! It looks better, actually. We it are looks glad to have better. you back. You are here at New Central. <laughs> All right, so let's get into it. How did you find acting, or did acting find you? Interesting question. Um, so, true story. And I was told this story because I can't remember myself. Mm -hmm. I was three years old. And my uncle, who's now late, okay. was a bad boy in those times. He's had a lot of girls to the house. And then he asked, used to have condoms. And at the time, there was a condom commercial running. I don't know if I can mention the name, Gold Circle. And then, you know, as a child, you watch TV and then you memorize this advert. Okay. Apparently, I, I memorized the condom advert. So one time, my family was at the house. And I just saw one of, you know, on the floor. And I pick it up, walk over to the living room, and then I recite the entire <laughs> thing. I don't know what I'm, what I'm talking about. It's just a bloody um, commercial. But they were like, you have no idea what you're talking about. And they right. laugh until now. They still haunt me with the story. Oh. So that was my first, that was the first time I acted in front of an audience, you know, with a script. Mm, beautiful. And props. Yeah, it was so acting found you? Yeah, found you me. You did not even Yeah, but after then, I, I, I wanted to be a lawyer, actually. Okay. And um, I had uncles around me. My father has a background in law as well. So he said, okay. I want to be a lawyer. I will support you. And so they would give me books. I remember I met Femi Falano. Okay. At the Supreme Court, some time ago, as a child, they really, they really wanted me to, you know, be. But then I found myself coming back to, you know, this, and um, I'm thankful to her parents who supported, supported you. Oh goodness me! I wish everybody could have this kind of story. I know but I'm lucky. Three. Wow. All right, let's go away from that. Now you're one of those people who seem to be comfortable on stage as you are on screen. Is there any difference between the two for you? That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> it's only the audience that I thinks am so. Not Comfortable. I can't tell them that. Now, yeah, I'm sorry. What? I'm always comfortable. Ah, I'm okay. comfortable wow. in every medium. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about it. But, you know, um, okay. I think with every performer who wants to do good work, you're always on your toes. Mm. No matter what the audience tells you, you can't allow that get into your head. So, mm. for me, like, every time I have to go on stage or on set, there's still this rush, like, ooh, don't mm. screw up now. Don't, don't, don't mess this up. You know, there's always that. Okay, always but that. which one is more comfortable for you? <sighs> I think for every, for every true actor, and I will say this, I think it's theatre. And you're saying that on period, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, on period. On <laughs> <laughs> maybe had a little laugh. Yeah, just because, you know, there's no encumbrance. There's no cut. Take it again. Once you're in it, you're in it till mm. the end. So you can ride that wave all to the end. But mm. it's just crazy when you're on a film set. I'm trying to give you Cuts. my business. Like, no, stop. I'm like, mm. what, what, what? Mm. You know, mm. and then this it's, thick. It's, hard to, thick. it's hard to even shoot in this country. Mm. You have, like, area boys doing their own thing. Mm. It's just the weather is not right. Generator sounds, the actors don't be prepared, you have some, you know, it's a lot of things. So that gets in the way of the joy I'll get on stage. Mm, 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 goodness me, I feel like <laughs> I want to see you on stage right now. Oh, <laughs> anyway. I, I, I might this year. Yay! <laughs> Good news. <laughs> All right, so I have a colleague who studied theater at, and he mm. keeps talking about how theater has a spirit that follows it. Once you assume a role, it kind of consumes you. Is this true for you? Mm. <laughs> Spirits. It's something that these kids in, in, in theater schools say. Okay. Uh, by the way, say? I am a theater kid. Just saying. <laughs> Shout out to Lauren and University of Lagos. Okay. Um, there's, there's this thing we call induction. It's a process they have to like initiate you into the entire thing. And it's this big, dramatic thing. And for me, it was just burnt on phone. I'm like, oh, well, okay. We believe this. But I think it's just uh, all... Is spectacle. this spiritual? Nah, not really. <laughs> but if it comes to performances, okay. there are times when you play roles and then you transcend yourself. Mm. And I've been blessed and fortunate to have experienced Look. that on a couple of roles where so it's almost like watching back, I'm like, I did that? How? Whoa, whoa. Oh. 
you really can transcend in that character or where that character goes to mentally if you're true to the game. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I'm getting a lot of inspiration right here, guys. Oh. Are you getting too? <laughs> you better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was quite impressed when I saw you in the short film Focus. Like, guy, you did I great. Th I, I, I didn't think I did great. Ah, you did. You did. I you just, did. Um, you know, after they don't ever say this, but I would I say know. something I'm like... <laughs> I remember the, the, the um, premiere was myself and Genevieve who plays my love interest in, in the short yeah. film. And she was like, well, hold on. I'm like, girl, uh-uh, uh-uh. And he's like, no. So it took me, um, I, th this one was released when? Last year? Yes, 2021. I just enjoyed it for the first time last week. Wow, you see? I just watched it like, okay, oh, I think I can bear to. Actor. No, it's not, it's not humility, but I think, <laughs> and there are a few of us who have like high standards for ourselves and mm. we want to go somewhere like, oh, I want to be with the, um, the Caprios and the Denzels and the Damson Idrises and you know, I want to be on that table. So when you see yourself and so you are like, like, and you cringe a little If they watch that, would they think I'm on their level? Oh. I want to be on that level. I want to sit at that table and discuss with them. So that's why we're like, ah. ah. You know, once just do good work, once just do good work. <laughs> All right. As a young person in the film industry, what yeah. are the challenges of experience in navigating this career path? Hmm. There have been challenges. Um, for someone who studied this as a course and had an idea of what he wanted, what I wanted my career to look like, mm -hmm. I wasn't prepared. Mm. And it's a lot of things that kids in theater schools need to learn. They're so, f and, and I get Are it. People it's a very um, <laughs> consuming experience, you know, going for class, playing this character, da, 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 but nothing really prepares you for the outside world. Mm. So myself, when, when I was in school, I was, I called myself a theater rat. I had sort of friend, shout out to Badeji and um, Mega. We used to live in the theater, Okay. Go to check it online to you know what are the new ideas to so what can we do what can we practice we're really into it but nothing I don't know for some reason we didn't think okay after this what do we get to do in real I thought I would you know from there just become a star all of a sudden you know start working and that kind of happened for me actually because right. I've been blessed when I, when I finished I went to do my uh, master's degree in, in University of Lagos and uh, okay. I did a play for the convocation whatever that year it was Walking Stick mm. and from then on it sort of introduced me to the Lagos Society right. and then my first a musical that was uh, Butcher and the Bridge, Spirit of David. It was, I played lead on my first entrance. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of, you know, put me on a different pedestal as against yes. the normal person. And then since then you've been riding and on, and on, been, on and on and on. But know, major, but they, major challenges. But they have been dry seasons. Yeah, okay. They have been dry okay. seasons. Okay. And um, it's something that my best friend haunts me with. He's it's like, oh, should you need to like have all that business interest. And I'm like, I don't care about money. Oh. I just want to, you know, I, I, and I would tell anybody, and this might sound very <laughs> anti the arts, if you want to be an actor, don't treat acting like a first love until it treats you the same way. Hmm. It's going to sound very um, controversial, acting. but don't do that to yourself. Hmm. Don't do that to yourself. Hmm. It's, it's okay if you do one film a year, as far as the right thing you're doing. And, and you but know, you have side but, but, but you know you're okay. So, and, yeah. and then it puts you in a position where nobody can see they're doing you a favor hmm. Hmm. or hmm. giving you a hmm. shot. Like, hmm. <laughs> I earn money, you're paying me here. Hmm. I'm doing you a favor, actually. Hmm. So you need to have that. And I'm grateful to have you know, interest there, here and there, and family, and I have, you know, comfort to a certain level where I can be like, you know what, I don't work for too much. Mm. Like, but not everybody has that. Mm. See, <laughs> I just want you to <laughs> blow quickly, you know, so that you can work with all those couple of people, because you look mm. like someone that, ah, you have a certain I do. <laughs> <laughs> You're proud. I'm very, very... All right, Moishun, <laughs> finally, what should we expect from you in the future? And the food, I have something that we are working on, and um, so I signed an, an NDA, Okay. To the tune of a couple of thousand dollars, I can't speak on it. Mm. So, but we've been working hard. <laughs> I can just left set and um, I'm going right back to it. Okay, and we wish you all me, the best. Be, we yeah, wish you all you the best. <laughs> all right, guys, I've been speaking with one of the finest actors over here in Nigeria on stage and on screen. His yeah. name is Mashir Fata, and we had an amazing time speaking with him. Thank you so much for joining us on E Central today. I'll see you again on Friday on Popkasa with my guests. Don't miss it. Bye.